Dear students and friends, today I will be talking on a relatively newer subject, the WHO labor care guidelines, which are essential for every labor room. So the labor care guidelines, which have been given by WHO in 2020, these are also called the next generation partograph. Now, we know that more than one-third maternal deaths, one-third stillbirths, and one-fourth of neonatal deaths result from complications during labor and childbirth. Majority occur in low-resource settings and are largely preventable through timely interventions. So, monitoring labor and childbirth and early identification and treatment of complications are critical for preventing these adverse birth outcomes. Improving the quality of care around the time of birth has been identified as the most impactful strategy for reducing all these deaths compared to antenatal or postnatal care settings. Now, if you look back in history, um, since 1954, um, we have a partograph in which the cervical dilatation was plotted against time. The initial partograph was given by Friedman then later in 1994, we had the WHO partograph, which had a latent phase and an active phase. In 2000, the WHO partograph was modified and we had abolished the latent phase and action and alert lines, which were strictly adhered to. Now in 2020, WHO has given us a new next generation partograph, which has seven sections, which are very useful. It includes, um, the second stage of labor, which is so important and management of which would help in preventing lots of complications. So in 1990s, the WHO partograph was a routine tool for displaying the progress of labor. Despite its global acceptance, the utilization rate was only 31% and correct completion rate was 3%. And this is the reason why in 2018, WHO initiated the process to revise this partograph and we have the modified partograph, a new understanding of individual variability of progress of labor had resulted in good perinatal outcomes. And this fact that many women do not experience labor that conforms to the average rate. So we know as one centimeter per hour is the rate of dilatation. But some women may not experience this and we may resort to cesarean section earlier. So this fact that women may experience um, on an average different a variation in the progress of labor, this was the partogram design which was initiated and this is called as the next gen generation partograph. It is distinct from previous partograph designs in its approach to labor duration. It trigger, there are triggers for clinical interventions and it emphasizes on respectful maternity care. The principal aims of this labor care guideline was monitoring and documentation of well-being of women. So all vitals and everything was charted on it. Skilled health personnel to offer supportive care assisted skilled health personnel to promptly identify and address emerging labor complications, prevent the unnecessary use of interventions in labor, support audit and quality improvement of labor management. So these were the main principles. Why it was started? It was developed to improve every women's experience of childbirth and to help ensure health and well-being of women and their babies by facilitating implementation of guidelines. Good quality and evidence-based clinical care was emphasized in all settings, and it expands the focus of labor monitoring to non-clinical practices that promote a positive childbirth experience for every woman and baby. Now, if you look at the structure, it has seven sections. First section is identifying information and labor characteristics at admission. The second section includes supportive care. Third section, care of the baby. Fourth section, care of the woman. 
Fifth, labor progress. Sixth, about all medications given during labor. And most important, the seventh section is shared decision making. The progress was informed to the patient and relatives and what decision we have told them and what decision they have taken. So as you can see, there are subsequent assessments throughout labor. And against time, all these findings are charted. For all observations, there is a horizontal time axis for documentation of corresponding time of observation and a vertical reference value axis for determination of any deviation from normal deviations. So if it crosses the alert part, then it is a chart like a red circle is made. So that, that is how you know that some complication may occur or something is deviating from normal. And most important, this is the second stage section in which all these things are again, during the second stage, these are plotted. Now, looking at the various sections one by one, section one is identifying information, the name of the patient, parity, time of onset of labor, when she went into active labor, various risk factors, and time of rupture of membranes. In the second section, it's all about respectful maternity care. So the presence of a companion, brain relief, oral fluids, whether given or not, and posture. Alerts are, if there is no companion, no pain relief is given, no oral fluids have been given, and if she's always in supine posture. Third section is care of the baby, the baseline fetal heart rate, presence of deceleration, amniotic fluid, whether it's meconium stained, fetal position, caput and molding. And you have the section for alerts. So if it goes, if any of these are there, then it is an alert and you mark it as red. Care of the women is in the fourth section, all her vitals, blood, pulse, systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, temperature, and urine output. Fifth section is the cervicogram, as we call it, the progress of labor. Now here you can see not only the progress, the rate of contractions, duration of contractions, and then the dilatation of cervix. So at five centimeters, if it is more, she's in more than six hours at five centimeters, then it is an alert. At six centimeters, if it is more than five hours, at seven centimeters, more than, more than three hours, eight centimeters, more than 2.5 hours, nine centimeters, more than two hours. So as you can see, the duration of labor has now increased because it depends on individual characteristics. Then the descent is the same. The descent is again plotted. One as a cervical dilatation as a cross and descent as a zero. Then the sixth section includes medications, oxytocin, any other medications and the IV fluids which are given. The most important one is the shared decision-making. It aims to facilitate continuous communication with the woman and her companion and consistent recording of all assessments and plans which have been agreed. Clear explanation of the procedure and the purpose should always be provided to each woman. The findings of physical examination should be explained to her and her companion and subsequent course of action should be made clear to enable shared decision making. So the assessment and the plan has to be documented. Now, how to use this labor care guide? Initially, initially we assess, we assess the well-being of the women and her baby and the progress of labor. Then we record or document these observations, check with reference and then plan. So it provides a positive feedback and decision-making loop and healthcare personnel are constantly encouraged with each observation to see whether it is deviating from normal, whether it has crossed the alert and various observations. So as you can see, they're a bit different. This is the modified partograph given in 2000. This is 2020 labor care guide or the next generation partograph. Let us look at these differences. There are many similarities. 
Similarities include graphical representation of progress of labor, that is cervical dilatation and descent against time, formal regular recording of important clinical parameters describing the well-being of the women and baby, but the differences, active phase is defined as starting from four centimeters of cervical dilatation. Here in the labor care guide, it is starting from five centimeters. In the modified WHO partograph, a fixed one centimeter per hour alert line was the rate of dilatation. And then we had alert lines and action lines. In the newer guide, evidence-based time limits at each centimeter of cervical dilatation this had no second stage section, while here there is intensified monitoring in the second stage, which is so very important because there are lots of second stage complications, which may lead to morbidity, both of the mother and the baby. Here, there is no recording of supportive care interventions. Here, explicit recording of labor companionship, pain relief, oral fluid intake, and posture. Posture also is so very important. This records strength, duration, and frequency of uterine contractions. This records duration and frequency of uterine contractions. There is no explicit requirement to respond to deviations from expected observations of any labor parameter other than cervical dilatation, alert, and action lines. So cervical dilatation had alert and action lines, while here deviations are to be highlighted in each parameter and corresponding response is to be recorded by the provider. So these were the differences. So for appropriate labor monitoring, the essential physical resources which are required are respectful labor and childbirth care, emotional support from a companion of choice, effective communication by staff, pain relief strategies, regular labor monitoring, documentation, audit, and feedback, oral fluid and food intake, mobility or in labor and childbirth position of choice, a pre-established referral plan should be there, and there should always be continuity of care. And this is only possible by this advanced labor care guide in addition to competent and motivated staff. So to just to recapitulate, recapitulate, in the labor care guide, all women have a right to a positive childbirth experience. And this includes respect and dignity, companion of choice, clear communication by maternity staff, pain relief strategies, mobility in labor and birth position of choice. Every birth is unique in its way. Some labors progress quickly. Others do not. Unnecessary medical interventions need to be avoided. Labor progression at one centimeter per hour during the active stage may be unrealistic for some, and this threshold should be used as a trigger, should not be used as a trigger for medical interventions. So this, these are the basis of the new labor care guidelines, and I hope they are clear. Thank you for your patient listening. I do have many other obstetric emergencies on my YouTube cha channel. So do, su do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you once again. And if you have any questions, you can put them in the inbox. I would be happy to answer them.